faceless comedy, find it by searching. This must be the LA riots. Allegedly, Dustin Hoffman was saving Twiggy from a fate worse than death, and Lloyd Bridges and his sons Jeff and Bo were out there <laughs> setting an example by clearing up the streets. And uh, everyone else was stealing cameras, and they were looking for them. <laughs> hey, <laughs> they were very mm. moved. As they was were. President Bush. I mean, mm. usually in an election year, a war's a good idea, but not a civil war. <laughs> <laughs> I think the LA police's defence is that this guy, Rodney King, the mo motorist, was being persistently black in a built-up area. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's Los Angeles and the efforts to restore normality after the week's riots. Uh, citizens of all races pulled together and even looters took back clothes to fashion stores, asking if they could change them for a smaller size. <laughs> uh, Paul and Charles, who are these couple of swells? Ah. Oh, it's old, uh, Well, these are, these are the two guys that started the Los Angeles riots, haven't they? <laughs> Gorbachev's on a speaking tour, isn't he, in the yes, States, of, uh... to raise money for the Gorbachev Foundation. And who do you think benefits from that? Probably Margaret Thatcher, I suspect. <laughs> Apparently, they were travelling in a jet called the Capitalist Tool. <laughs> it's pretty appropriate for Ronald Reagan, <laughs> isn't it? Why, why is the capitalist bit appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness only knows. <laughs> Reagan presented Gorbachev with a cowboy hat, while Gorby gave Ronnie an 1882 edition of a book of proverbs. <laughs> uh, Reagan said he was delighted with his present, as he's lost the copy he bought when it first came out. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Jan, compare and contrast the following in less than a thousand words. Uh, <coughs> while we're in a that school. Must Oops. Be a school. <laughs> oh, that's dear. a Bulgarian MI5 man. <laughs> 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 Uh, so this combination of uh, a schoolroom and EastEnders would mean uh, that uh, they're going to be putting EastEnders and Neighbours and all that old bilge mm. on their school syllabuses. It would. I'm sure the theory is that by the end of five years everyone will be so thick they'll vote for the Conservatives again. <laughs> <laughs> As well as soap operas, the syllabus will also include comedies Monty Python and Allo Allo. Experts have said it's outrageous calling Allo Allo a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> It'll also be possible to study the Rocky Horror Show, although it's not clear what category that comes under. Transvesticism and buggery in 70s rock musicals. <laughs> uh, Paul and Charles, oh. some riveting footage for you, but uh, what does it conceal? It's a building. This is a new invention. It's a cross between a building and a ship. <laughs> <laughs> The idea is you stand by the river bank and the office floats its way towards you. <laughs> do you not know? School, you know? We're not actually giving... Uh, is this something to do with Canary Wharf? No? no? This is, um... No. <laughs> I well, I think I'll say. just go back to those comments. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, perhaps you'd like Canary to... Canary Wharf's in. empty. That's got some people in it. So, um... <laughs> that's... The, the first one is the, the secret MI6 building. Oh. Super and the other one, I presume, is the secret MI5 building. <laughs> ah. um, but if it's a secret, just... how are we expected to know about it? <laughs> <Yeah. that? laughs> yes, they're the... The uh... secret is um, that they're in that building, but no one knows what they do, um, including them. Because <laughs> that's been top secret for years. What do MI6 do? Um... Make furniture, don't they? <laughs> be a hell of a sight more useful than what they do do. Uh, one of their sideboards. They, they... Uh, John Major's now attempting to bring the security services into the public domain. They'll soon be listed in yellow pages under spy <laughs> organisations. <laughs> with uh, 24 hour emergency spies for those unexpected leaks. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a cultural attaché mate. Hang on, I'll see if there's one on the van. Oh, it is. <laughs> Which uh, leads us painlessly to the end of this inaugural round, at which point, uh, let me tell you that Paul and Charles have a frail two, and Ian and Jan have a stonking six. Stonking. So with the game up and running, we like to bring things to a grinding halt by sowing <laughs> the seeds of our caption competition. One <coughs> incongruous moment per team. Ian and Jan, here comes yours. <laughs> Uh, Paul and Charles, that's for you. <laughs> and in the, in the, in the eternity that uh, stretches from here to the end of the programme, it's your thankless task to dream up a caption or two.
But uh, in the meantime, let's stroll on into round two, set as it is in the tawdry world of tabloid headlines. One each to jog your memory. Paul, you start. Worm cheats all washed up. This is about? the, the uh, wonderful world of um, wor uh, worm charmers, like snake charmers, but they, they work on worms. And they had a, a worm charming contest last year, and apparently they used sort of washing up liquid to charm the worms out of the earth. And that's been banned this year, and you can only use substances that you can actually drink. It's a faultless <laughs> answer. Uh. Uh, this refers to the uh, ninth All British Worm Charming Championships, uh, in which contestants have 15 minutes to charm as many worms as possible from a four foot by three foot patch of earth. Sounds like a party political broadcast, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, competitors used a number of aids, including bagpipes, clog dancing, best bitter, and champagne. Surprisingly, no one tried a fork. <laughs> Pouring uh, fairy liquid onto the worms' heads is regarded as physical cruelty and is outlawed, but playing non-stop Sasha Distel tapes, as one man did, is apparently quite permissible. So uh, mental cruelty is obviously okay. Uh, Charles, what is every parent's last deterrent? It's a misprint that should be detergent. Oh, it is. <laughs> um, I think this is this row that's been running in Scotland this week about should you be allowed to clout your kid? Uh, do, can you belt them? Can you stamp on them? Can you do various awful things to your children? The answer is no, but you are allowed to slap them as long as it's with an open palm and constructively delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I just think a lot of the MPs in the House will know, you know, will know uh, quite a lot about corporal punishment and spanking and all that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they enjoy it hugely, generally. Um, my it's... lips are sealed. <laughs> It is the decision, as you mentioned, by the Scottish Law Commission uh, to mm -hmm. make it a criminal offence to smack your children. Uh, so if your kids misbehave on a caravan holiday north of the border, you'll no longer be able to smack them in the trossocks. <laughs> uh, the Scots have also banned slippers, along with the use of spoons. Must make eating porridge rather difficult. <laughs> uh, Jan, uh, hand me the Big Mac, please, nurse. Um, well, I, I, I don't know this story but it looks like it's a story involving maybe a hospital which has given its catering franchise to McDonald's. Not the catering franchise, that's for emetics. <laughs> <laughs> Very sensible really, you know, to replace mm. sort of, uh, you know, white bread, soggy peas, you know, replace it with a much healthier uh, diet of, of McDonald's. Apparently some Of cardboard? Yes. <laughs> Allegedly. There was some... <laughs> <laughs> but it's is this a... seriously true that a hospital has given McDonald's a... It is seriously true, and it's Guy's Hospital in, in London. Uh, well, why don't they get the doctors typical... to dress up as Ronald McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's Burger Giants McDonald's who plan to open a restaurant inside uh, Guy's Hospital in London. That's uh, outrageous. That's just Come. outrageous. Perhaps you'd like to take it up with them. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> uh, a spokesman for the firm said that they had already adapted to the NHS ideal. Uh, there was now up to a six-month waiting list for a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, of course, uh, is the government's flagship trust hospital. Having sold off the catering to McDonald's, they're now selling off the x-ray department to Kodak and the uh, gynaecological department to Paul Raymond. <laughs> and, uh, finally, Ian, is uh, Baron Scoundrel really dead? Is Baron Scoundrel really dead? <coughs> no, that's what I said. Ah. <laughs> this is about um, some peer who's not believed to be dead. Uh, I think it's um, the Countess of Finchley, uh, <laughs> who apparently is still alive somewhere. Or is it her son? <laughs> or is it that you don't know the answer? <laughs> is this Moynihan? Is this Lord Moynihan? It is Lord Moynihan, eventually, uh, yes. Ah, uh, when you go uh, through the roll call of crooked peers, he always <laughs> <laughs> slots in there. Lord Moynihan was uh, an aged crook who happened to be in the House of Lords, like so many, um, <laughs> who lived in Thailand and ran massage parlours and dealt in drugs and was wanted by various hitmen. And he died, so we were told. And um, because of the new classless society we have, there's a principle of hereditary in the House of Lords, um, <laughs> so it immediately went to the son of one of his attendants in the massage parlour, the new Lord Moynihan of... Five pounds for French, please. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever charming title the mother has, um... Five pounds for French? <laughs> <laughs> what earth does that mean? <laughs> I'll grow up! <laughs> <laughs> it's the crooked uh, aristocrat Lord Tony Moynihan, half-brother, in fact, of uh, former Tory minister Colin, who half may brother. have uh, faked his own death 
and be hiding out on the tiny island of Kibu in the Philippines, although the notion that the island uh, may be harboring a fat crook was dismissed as absurd by his neighbours, Mr and Mrs Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, at the end of all that, the situation would appear to be that Paul and Charles have a still puny six, and uh, Ian and Jan have a towering ten. So we stumble upon our deeply revered archive round. Two pieces of celluloid history to feast upon, <coughs> one for each team to relish before telling us what happened next. Ian and Jan, here's uh, what happened before. Oh, dear. <laughs> It's a jet-powered newt. <laughs> Ken Livingston running for Labour Party leadership. <laughs> running from the Labour Party leadership. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what happened next? Any ideas? Oh, he fell off probably, didn't he? Um, mm. He was inaugurating his fares fair policy for speedboats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you're right. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's, uh, it's Red Ken there, back in 1985, taking part in something called Thames Day, in which the idea was for him to swallow as much of the Thames as possible. <laughs> uh, most politicians try to walk on water. Ken is content to ride on a giant yellow sausage and still <laughs> uh, Paul and Charles, a strangely familiar setting for you. Oh, I'm glad you stopped it before it got very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Does this Ken Livingston join Thames Day? <laughs> <by the way? laughs> Oddly enough, yes, it is. It is? Is it yes. really? Oh, look, oh good. Oh. Mm. He fell in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's so simple, but it could be true. Let's He's paragliding, all. isn't he? This is paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them, the dream ticket again. Yeah. <laughs> a new sport, <laughs> underwater skiing. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's Mr Livingstone again, who in a moment of heavy allegory attempted to demonstrate what heights the GLC could achieve and promptly plunged headlong into the water. <laughs> and uh, given it's the Thames, that's water in the loosest possible sense. <laughs> so uh, at the end of that aquatic round, it's my bound duty to give you the sorry news that uh, Paul and Charles are trailing lugubriously with eight, and Ian and Jan have roared into a lead of twelve. Could I, could I just point out, however, that I don't think this, the scoreline tells the whole story. There is a distinct shift, a swing that we are finding <laughs> towards the end of the campaign. I'm sure these headline yes. figures are concealing what's really going on. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we're very optimistic. Yes. We're very encouraged. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, this is the sort of position we'd like to have been in at this stage, That's isn't right. it? <laughs> I mean, it's a firm base on which to build for exactly, the future. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Second. Uh... <laughs> We'd have been very... Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's uh, unleash the pandemonium that is round four, our odd one out round, oh God, four oddities, uh, one of which our panel have to out. Who is the Jason Donovan and why is all <laughs> Paul. Jason Donovan, notorious, notorious, notorious heterosexual. heterosexual. Yes. <laughs> Ask anyone at the London Palladium. <laughs> uh, very creepy. Oh, Jason, nothing wrong with Jason. <laughs> Straight as a die, old Jason. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Paul, uh, here's your little lot before you get carted off to uh, the tower. That is not Jason Donovan. <laughs> Michael Heseltine, Reg Varney, James Whale, and a whale. Um, well, well um, none of them have ever had sex with Jason Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> um, apart from, no. Um, <laughs> is, are, um, is it dyslexia? Good grief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did you get that? Heavens. Well, I'd, well, James Well I'd heard was sort of dyslexic. I, mean, I was just trying to sort of think what it could be, really. And you, you know? knew that the wheel was dyslexic. Well, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael Heseltine really. is dyslexic because he signs his initials Michael Sad Git. <laughs> <laughs> Reg Varney <laughs> is known to his neighbours as Reg Varnish. <laughs> And that's Susan Hampshire, I knew. Yeah. 
So you're going to pick an odd one out for us? <laughs> well, well, um, the well, yes, presumably, exactly. has not... Uh, Michael Heseltine has always had difficulty reading, especially when it comes to unemployment figures. <laughs> James Whale is a presenter of a show that's on television, so it's called the James Whale Radio Program. <laughs> it's not dyslexia, that's just stupidity. And uh, Reg Varney was the star of On the Buses, or Know the Subs, as he called it. <laughs> uh, Charles, here's your motley yes, sir. crew. <clears throat> Lady Porter. Yes, Lady Shirley Porter, former Westminster Council that leader. Buster, Buster Mottram. Uh, lateral thinker Edward de Bono, mm. thinking laterally there, and uh, Lloyd Grossman. Well, uh, I haven't got a clue. Um, I've got, I have got a clue, oddly. Three of the four uh, would have more worries than most about the uh, LA situation. Property over there, or...? Three of guess. them were on the jury, were they? <laughs> <laughs> And Lloyd no. Grossman delivered the, the <coughs> guilty verdict, but nobody understood what he said. <laughs> I used to go out with her. <laughs> Is the right answer? <laughs> no, I'll have to what put you out Buster of your misery. Mottram? Oh, I never went out with him. <laughs> it's a, I'll, I'll give you one because it's actually a good guess, but it's that uh, they're all Lloyd's names. Except oh. uh, Lloyd Grossman, of course, whose name's Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd's names being uh, celebrities, aristocrats and the generally filthy rich who hoped to make vast sums of money out of Lloyd's of London but humorously lost their shirts instead. Dame Shirley was of course leader of Westminster Council which sold three large and valuable cemeteries to property dealers for five pence each then tried to buy them back for two million pounds. So obviously a contender for businesswoman of the year. <laughs> Buster Mottram lost a lot of money, was a member of the National Front and was a rotten tennis player anyway so we don't care about him. And, uh, interestingly Lloyd Grossman's name, Lloyd, is only spelt with one L. Ludicrous way to spell Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jan, a wholesome bunch for you. Max Bygraves. Kim Philby. Lovely. Captain Mark Phillips. Oh. And the Archbishop of Canterbury. <coughs> hmm. Well, um, could it be to do with love children? It is to do with love children. Mm. Allegedly, I was about to say I thought I was being... No, that's no. absolutely right. Well, we uh, all know so about the archbishops, but what about the archbishops? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it must be um, <coughs> Mark Phillips, Max Bygraves and Kim Philby, the only un-gay spy, or... Mm. Yes, Allegedly. absolutely right. Allegedly, yeah. Um, it's uh, fairly serious to suggest someone in MI6 isn't gay. Yeah. <laughs> Jason fairly... Donovan isn't gay. <laughs> Neither's the Archbishop of Canterbury. No, I'm glad And he you... hasn't got a love child either, so he's the odd one out. Right, it's very good. Two points. Uh, the answer is that all of them have sired love children, apart from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Bizarre. as far as we know. Um, <laughs> Max Bygraves' best known hit was You Need Hands, although it sounds as if he could have done with keeping them to himself on the one hand. Kim Philby was a defector in more sense of the word than one. Uh, when he wasn't being the third man, he was busy rogering the second, third, and fourth woman. <laughs> And uh, Captain Mark Phillips had an affair with Heather Tonkin, the sort of name that's just screaming out for a limerick. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and finally in this round, uh, Ian. There was a young woman called Tonkin. Yes. <laughs> and finally in this round, Ian. Uh, consider these. Ted Heath. Consider that. Peter Lilly, Social Secretary and Minister. Simon Le Bon. Oh, he's nice. Looking well. Oh, and blimey. Tracy Stamp, celebrated sex changee. She doesn't look well at all. <laughs> <laughs> was, this, was this photograph taken before, during or after? <laughs> what happened to the shape of her head? <laughs> Did, what, you, you, say, you say sex change, and um, from what to what? <laughs> <laughs> it's very unfair, isn't it, really? It's very unfair. Yes, it is unfair. She's had the male bit put on her head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right, thank you. Um, <laughs> have we established that theme? I think we have. Yes, I think we probably... Uh... The answer here is that they're all sailors. Except... Except Peter Lilly. Two points. Uh, the answer is that all of them are sailors, except Peter Lilly, who uh, isn't a sailor, has never been a sailor, and indeed has never said hello to one. <laughs> um, Ted, uh, Ted Heath has always had something of a sailor in him. Uh, Simon <laughs> Bond. Simon Le Bon What is, is that meant to mean? <laughs> <laughs> Always enjoyed sailing. <laughs> Simon Le Bon is another fat man in a boat who seems to have vanished without trace. That sounds familiar. 
uh, and sex change witch Tracy Stamp uh, is a round-the-world yachtswoman who was formerly a merchant seaman by the name of Bernard. <laughs> Strange name for a merchant seaman, Tracy Bernard, but... Uh, which uh, brings us tumbling to the end of this round, uh, to which point I can tell you that Paul and Charles have an overwhelmingly poor 11, and uh, Ian and Jan have a frighteningly efficient 16. Oh So we somersault gaily into our final missing words round, one set of headlines for each combo, but with the cunning wheeze of having one or two words missing. Give us the words or guess some better ones is what they have to do. Current runners-up go first, so Paul and Charles, I'm afraid that means you. Brace yourselves. Right. Storm brews over Heseltine's role in what? Animal sex video. <laughs> He's uh, he, he seen in the back holding the coats. He's holding the goats, in fact. <laughs> um, how about Midland? I think this is about the bank. I'll give you... Yes, I'll give you two for that. Midland bid is actually well, the answer. Midland Very bid, good. Right. Charles hits what at Selena's Scots party? Um, found a member of Boney M. <laughs> New singing. broadcasting low. He, um, uh, I'll he give you a tight note. <laughs> uh, yes, high note is, high note. Uh, high is the right answer. Good. Very well good. Very good. Uh, major promises new what for Scotland? Biro. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> That's the total package. No, uh, not, not quite that generous. Uh, uh, Joe, actually, I don't think there is anything missing from this headline. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> new nothing. <laughs> Yes. Um, is it a gender or New Deal? How about a New mm, Deal? No voice is the answer. New voice. It's his voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Branson train to offer stewardess service, free meals, and what? <laughs> <laughs> Videos is well, the right answer. Very good. I thought um, you were going to say something I've seen. No, 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 no. no. Animal sex video. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, uh, Bush blames who for riots? Everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> What about rioters? I haven't seen that headline yet. <laughs> is it 60s social policy? Uh, I'll give you one for that. 60s liberals in, is in fact the answer. Yeah. A bit tough on Joe Grimman, but there we are. <laughs> 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 so, so much for that. Uh, Ian and Jan, here are your headlines. Paddy does what on the M4? <laughs> Shorthand typist. I'm glad to see that not a smirk has come over Mr. <laughs> Kennedy's face. <laughs> it's extremely loyal of him. Mm. Could um, you just move on to another one? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's stick on this one. Any more ideas? <laughs> it's uh, a, the tun. Uh, no, an Irish jog is in fact uh, the oh, right answer. Yeah. Uh, next, BBC sees what as vital to retain radio's listeners? Radio programmes. <laughs> Batteries. Not quite that obvious. Radio 1, music. Is it yes, give you two marks for that. Pop music. Yep. Next, head lets children do what at school? Learn. <laughs> Revise for their GCSE moron exam. Yes. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you two for smoke. Uh, light up is in fact the right answer. Next, uh, MI6 chief comes out of what? <laughs> Furniture warehouse. A lucky bag. <laughs> Uh, comes out of Russian embassy, usually. <laughs> <laughs> no, comes out of shadows is, in fact, the answer. Same thing. To pursue a solo Was career. Was he a bass player? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, one what is enough, says Fergie's sister. <laughs> Shagger in the family? <laughs> well, she may have done, but it's not uh, what this headline is about. <laughs> Overblown tart. <laughs> Back on his favourite subject. Uh, the opposite. One well, marriage is marriage. the right answer. I think Paul said it just first. No, he uh, didn't. Which uh, <laughs> doesn't unfortunately make any difference anyway. Which uh, bout of terminal conjecture acts as a fitting end to this week's day barter. And tragically, it seems that this week's lame ducks are Paul and Charles with 19, and this week's golden geese are Ian and Jan with 21. So, a jar of royal jelly to our winners and a tin of Swarfiga to our losers. <laughs> uh, but all is not entirely lost because we still have our caption competition. Ian and Jan, what did you think of for this? Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> these incontinence pads aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Freddie the Dolphin found. <laughs> and I thought it was him in LA saying, turn off the hoses, the fires have gone out. <laughs> Paul and Charles, what about yours? Um, are you as pissed as I am? <laughs> It could be that, that man in the middle there going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or she, she, could, she could be saying to him, she could be saying, where's that ghastly aggressive bird? And he says, I think she's still in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on which uh, treacherous note, we say uh, thank you to our guests, Ian Hislop and Jan Ravens, Paul Merton and Charles Kennedy. And I leave you with news that Norman Lamont has denied accusations that personal hygiene is affecting his popularity. <laughs> In Los Angeles, the foreman of the jury that acquitted the four police officers is spotted fleeing the city. <laughs> and finally, some good news, George Bush's brain has been found in Arkansas. It's huge, good night. isn't it?